Jesus. My God, if you can't think of nothing to be thankful for, I got a blessing for you right now. He woke you up this morning. Come on. Amen. How many car wrecks done happened today that we don't even know about? How many people have died over the past weekend? Amen. You got something to be thankful for. You just got to change your mind and roll back the curtain of memories. Hallelujah. Think about what you've been through in your life. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you, you can find at least one thing to be thankful for. Hallelujah. My God, some of you may have seen death face to face. Hallelujah. Your family members have seen death face to face. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. And you've been praying for your family members. Hallelujah. Some of them have been in a hospital. Hallelujah. My God, and can't nobody fix it but Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you come down on your knees. My God, and you pray to God and say, Lord, help my family. Oh, maybe it was you. You said, Lord, heal my body. Oh, my God. Maybe it's your mind. You said, Lord, help my mind. Hallelujah. You got something to be thankful for. My God, I guarantee you that. Hallelujah. My God, but sometimes we have to remind people. Now, hallelujah. I ain't here to push you to serve God or to praise him. But I'm just here to remind you of what God has done for you. Hallelujah. My God, some of you, hallelujah, you've been in a place. Hallelujah. Where you've been thinking about suicide. You've been in a place, hallelujah, my God, where you've just been so stressed out that you couldn't even eat your food. You've been so stressed out. Your hair start turning gray. Your hair start falling out. You start having heart issues. You start having mental issues. But hallelujah, how many know God can deliver? How many know God can set free? How many know God can make a way? How many know God can open a door? How many know God can deliver you? How many know God can give you a blessing? How many know God can straighten out the crooked roads? How many know God can make the bumpy places plain? How many know God can pull down the mountains? How many know God can fill the valleys? My God, God can do anything. He can whisper to you and he'll make it all right. He can talk to your heart and he'll make it all right. He can wake you up at night and you think something is wrong, but he come in your room and get all over you and you start to praise him early in the morning. How many know God can give you dreams and visions? How many know God can comfort you? How many know God can be a company keeper? How many know God can be a mind regulator? How many know God can wash away your sins all in his blood? I'm here to let you know God can do all things. Hallelujah. With God, with man, things may seem impossible, but with God, all things are possible. You got something to be thankful for. Oh, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. That's a song we sing. Say, you know, I owe God a praise. You know, I owe God, oh God, a praise. Hallelujah. How many owe him a praise? You might not give it to him, but you owe it to him. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you come to church, you don't even feel like praising him. My God, when you don't feel like praising him, you still got to force yourself to praise him. Because that's just your flesh. Hallelujah. Your flesh don't want to praise him. And when you're done praising, you call that a sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. Why? Because I sacrificed. I didn't feel like praising him, but I did it in the house. Hallelujah. What if God looked at you and said, I don't feel like waking you up this morning. Let me check it tomorrow. Give me a rain check. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. What if God said, I'm going to give a rain check on whether I'm going to wake you up? My God, but don't you, ain't it good to know and comforting to know that God smiles and looks down on the just just as well as the unjust? Hallelujah. My God, you ain't been good all your life. You ain't been perfect this weekend. You ain't been perfect this month. You ain't been perfect this year. But God said, I'm going to still treat you as I love you. Hallelujah. Because I got that agape love. Hallelujah. I got that love that I'm going to love you with unconditionally. Hallelujah. God going to love you and he ain't even going to want nothing in return. Hallelujah. See, no matter what people, sometimes people may love you, but they're looking for something in return. Amen. I'm glad God ain't like man. Amen. Amen. See, Amen. sometimes people will love you just because you got stuff. You got something. I got money, so I got a lot of friends. Amen. Y'all ever heard the phrase, more money, more problems? <laughs> Amen. And when your money gone, where your friends go? They gone. 
Amen. When you run out of resources, where your friends go? Amen. But I'm glad to know that there's a friend that stick closer than a brother. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, I'm so glad to know uh, that we got a God that loves us no matter what we've done in life. Uh, you can be a homosexual and God say, I still love you. You can be a drunkard and God say, I still love you. You can be a murderer and God say, I still love you. You can be a hater and God say, I still love you. You can be an abuser and God say, I still love you. You can be a lesbian and God say, I still love you. You can be a fornicator and adulterer and God say, I still love you. My hand is stretched out uh, to a disobedient nation. Hallelujah. But God wants us to come to him. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, seek ye him while he may be found. Hallelujah. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Let the wicked man forsake his thoughts and the unrighteous man his ways. My God, we got to repent of our sins, baby. Repent. Get baptized in Jesus' name. And God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Y'all believe that? That's the Bible. You repent. That means to turn from your sins. Get baptized in the name of Jesus. That's going to wash away your sins. And he said, I will fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, I highly encourage you to do it when you're ready. Hallelujah. My God, I say do it today. But you got to do this at your own time. Hallelujah. My God, because that baptism is going to wash away every sin that you have ever committed. I don't care what you did yesterday or last week. If you get baptized in Jesus' name today, God will wash away every sin that you have ever committed. Hallelujah. He'll do that. He'll wash them away. He will forgive you of your sins. I don't care what you've done, how you've done it, who you did it with, or what time it was when you did it. Hallelujah. God will deliver. Amen. He will set you free. That's why he shed his blood. He shed his blood so that we can be saved. Amen. He shed his blood so that we can have remission of sin. Hallelujah. Turn to Matthew chapter 26. Amen. Matthew chapter 26. Amen. We're going to talk about the blood. Amen. And the delivering blood. There are some old hymns that we sing that sings about the blood. Amen. Oh, the blood, precious blood, Jesus' blood shed for me. Matthew 26. Oh, the blood, clay saving blood, cleansing blood from Calvary. Amen. Them blood songs are move, yeah. Hallelujah. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. Just like the olden days, no matter what the people say, the blood prevails. Amen. The blood will prevail. Amen. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Y'all know that? I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood, hallelujah, for me. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died, died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. He's coming back again. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. How do you know he's coming back? He's coming back again. He died and he rose. Hallelujah. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, amen, Jesus died on the cross. And I know, I know it was the blood for me. It was the blood. Amen. On Calvary. Do you know that was the purpose of God coming in the flesh? Look, watch this. Jesus Christ is God Almighty in the flesh. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is God in the flesh. And God wanted to die for us. He searched the earth and there was nobody worthy enough to die for us. So he said he has to do it himself. Amen. So he wrapped himself in flesh. The spirit of God wrapped himself in flesh. 
And it was blood in that flesh. And he died for us. God shed his blood for us so that we may have the forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter 26. And we want to start at verse number 25. Amen. And for anybody who wants to take part in this, we want to do a, read another scripture about this, but we'll be taking communion today if you want to partake in that. Amen. But I'm going to read some scriptures to you, amen, about why you need to examine yourself and be careful. Don't just take communion just because communion is there to take and you want to eat a piece of bread and drink some grape juice. <laughs> yes, we do not give wine at communion. We give grape juice. Amen. Well, there ain't no place for people to come in here and get drunk. Amen. Some people give wine at communion and, and they have their reasons of trying to say why they're doing that. Amen. But I'm, my thoughts, I'm like, well, if, if God just delivered a drunkard in my church from alcohol, why in the world would I give him communion and put alcohol right back in his mouth Amen. if God just delivered him from it? Now he's going to go out there, well, I, I'm drinking in the church, but I can't drink outside the church. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So um, we'll read a scripture on that, so I'll just let y'all know um, this is time to examine yourself. Amen. And that's what the Bible told us to do, because there's some who have taken communion, and he says they're sick, and some have even died by taking communion unworthily. Amen. We'll get that scripture, amen, whenever we get to that point. But Matthew 26 and verse number 25. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Amen. Let's, uh, let's go back up real quick to verse 22. Uh, verse 21. Verse 21. And again, if y'all get uh, a little cool, go ahead and shut that door. Just stand up and go shut it if you get cool. Start on verse 21 and bring it on up. To verse 24, where we were, 25, where we were. Matthew 26 and 21. Facebook, thank God for you. YouTube, if you're watching us on YouTube, thank God for you also in Jesus' name. Matthew 26 and 21. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Is it me? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the ditch, the same shall betray me. Verse 24 says, The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Ain't that something? Jesus said, whoever's going to betray me, it'll be better if you wasn't born. Ain't it so? Verse 25, then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Verse 26, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Amen. So we know it wasn't his physical body, right? They wasn't they weren't cannibals eating on Jesus' actual flesh, gnawing, gnawing at Jesus' uh, skin. That ain't what they were doing, but it was a symbolic, right? It was symbolic of him letting them know, hey, I am incarnated. I have come in the flesh. Amen. And what you're going to do is you're going to do this they call it the Last Supper because this is the last supper he had before he got on that cross. That's why it's called the Last Supper. This is the last meal he had before he got on that cross. So that's why they call it the Last Supper. So, and we call it communion. The Last Supper. We're communioning together. Amen. We are coming together in fellowship to remember what God has done for us, which is died on the cross for us. Amen. That's what communion is for. A remembrance of what he's done for us. Hallelujah. And we ought to give him praise for dying for us Amen. and shedding his blood. Because that's the reason we can be saved today, right? Amen. It's because of his blood. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, take, eat. This is my body. Verse 27. 
And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament. They weren't really drinking his blood, right? Amen. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Remission means forgiveness. It was shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day. Until that day. Come on in. Amen. Amen. I will not drink henceforth of this fruit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Feel free to have a seat if you like. I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in the Father's kingdom. Now notice you use the word fruit of the vine, right? That's what wine is. Okay? People say, well, Jesus drunk wine. Y'all hear people say that. And they try to make that as a, 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 a segue that I can drink because Jesus drunk. <laughs> Show me where in the Bible where Jesus walked around drunk. We ain't got no Bible for that with Jesus walking around drunk. Right? Notice the words he used in verse 29. Fruit of the what? Of the vine. That's what wine is. Wine, watch this. Let me drop this knowledge on you real quick. Wine is wine before it is fermented wine. See, fermented wine is what gets you drunk. They got yeast and sugar and it's sitting in those barrels until it gets into its fermentation stage. But if you take grapes, say you take grapes and you smash them up in a, a bucket or something, right? Those grapes turn into a juice. That's fruit of the vine. Okay? That's fruit of the vine. Thank you, Jesus. Or you go, we go over here to uh, High V or Family Dollar, and I bet they got 100% apple juice, 100% grape juice, right? That's fruit of the vine, right? Now, if you take that same grape juice, do you know that I had a guy who tell me they make, they make alcohol in jail. They take orange juice. He said they take orange juice, put some sugar at the bottom, put some orange juice in there, and they shake it up, and they sit it under their sink. And about a week after it sit under the sink, it ain't been refrigerated. It's just sitting in there. And after a week of being uh, under that sink, this, it, the orange juice have ferment, fermented. And then they drinking in jail, getting drunk. They can't bring alcohol in there, so they make it inside the jail. <laughs> that's what he told me. I said, man, that's something. And they, they be sitting in jail, getting drunk. We're going to be letting the orange juice sit for a week in a bottle with some sugar in the bottle. <laughs> and there's a... Yeah, so alcohol that can get you intoxicated is what is wrong to drink. But as long as you're drinking wine, which is fruit of the vine, 100% grape juice, you're good. Right? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But people try to make these excuses as to why they want to do what they're doing when they have somebody to tell them, you better stop doing that. <laughs> people always got a reason, or, 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 or they always got a reason or... Um, a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Excuse. They got an excuse as to why they want to continue doing what they're doing. But don't you know, see, what was the purpose of Jesus dying? It was for the remission of sins. The reason he shed his blood, the Bible says in verse 28, this is my blood which was shed for many for the remission of sins. Remission means forgiveness of sins. So if you're doing something that's wrong, you don't have to get mad about it. I don't like that preacher. That preacher talking about me. Grow up. Ain't nobody talking about you. The Bible, we read the scriptures. And guess what? If you're doing something that's wrong, that's why Jesus died. You should say, Lord, I thank you for your blood because I see what I'm doing is wrong and I know you want to forgive me of it. That's the mindset you should have. A lot of people leave alone. That preacher talking about me. Ain't nobody got... I ain't sitting at home making a sermon about you. <laughs> that ain't worth my time. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So he said, I won't drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Then we see why the blood was there, right? For the remission of sins. Go to Hebrews real quick. The book of Hebrews, chapter number nine. 
Hebrews chapter number 9. Amen. Yeah, I want everybody comfortable, so if you need to prop that door open and keep that stand and get some air in here, you can. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 9. And when you have that, I want you to find verse number 11. Amen. Thank God for everybody who's able to join us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews 9 and 11. Facebook, thank God for you watching as well. Amen. And YouTube, thank God for you also in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 9. Where your Bible at? In verse number 11, y'all get there, you can follow along with me. <clears throat> if you need some help, we got some people back there in the back that can help y'all. So, But Christ being come a high priest, now y'all listen to this. Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now watch this. So the priest, in, in, in the Old Testament, the priest would take blood of goats and calves. And he would take that blood and go behind what they call the holy of the holies. And when he would take that blood, he would sprinkle that blood upon everything. And he would sprinkle that blood for the sins of the people. But now what he's saying is that Jesus has come and went behind that same veil with his own blood, not with the blood of goats and the blood of calves, cows and, and animals, but he went with his own blood, amen, to, for the, to give us all eternal redemption. Eternal means forever, right? Redemption means deliverance. God is giving us forever deliverance. Amen. That's why he shed his blood. So that we can have our sins forgiven. I don't care what sins you have done or what you're doing. God said, come to me because I love you. Hallelujah. Amen. No greater love than this. That a man would lay down his life for a friend. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. And what that scripture means is that your love will never equal up to God's love. Hallelujah. We're supposed to spread God's love, but there's no greater love than what he had done, which is laid down his life for us. Hallelujah. And just because he laid down his life does not mean you automatically enter into the kingdom. You got to turn from your unrighteousness. Hallelujah. You got to show God that I'm willing to lay down my life because you laid down your life. Hallelujah. Jesus laid down his life for us. Hallelujah. We got to lay down our life. What life am I talking about laying down? I'm not telling you to go and commit suicide and put a knife to your chest or slit your wrist. But I'm talking about spiritual suicide. Hallelujah. You got to lay down that old man. Hallelujah. You got to lay down that man of sin. That man of unrighteousness. That's the life you got to lay down. You lay down your life because Jesus laid down his life. And when you lay down your life, you are trained transformed being. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says, they that be in Christ are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God wants to make you new. He wants to wash you clean. He wants to restore your salvation. He wants to fill you up with the Holy Ghost. He wants you to walk clean and live holy. He wants you to be satisfied with being holy. Because some people try to walk this way, but they're not satisfied with the life that they live in. Hallelujah. You got to be satisfied. Sanctified and satisfied. <laughs> Amen. You can't just be sanctified and live grudgingly trying to be sanctified. That means your heart ain't in it. Man, man, I wish I could go back into the world and, 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 and fornicate like I used to. You, your heart back in the world. Amen. Amen. Your heart needs to be focused on things above and not on things on earth. Hallelujah. You've got to change your mind in how you think about sin. Sin is the ultimate killer of the soul. Hallelujah. The Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Amen. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is what? 
eternal life. And God wants to give everybody that gift. What is the gift? The Holy Spirit. He said, if you repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the gift, right? Of the Holy Ghost. Now, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. You receive the Holy Spirit, you have, oh, hallelujah, you have eternal life. Amen. You don't receive the Holy Spirit by saying, Lord, I accept you into my life. Be rule of my heart and come in and save me now. Amen. You don't get the Holy Spirit by just praying a sinner's prayer. That's what a lot of these churches do. All right? And if that works, then why people's lives ain't changed? People say a sinner's prayer, and they walk out the church, and they still going to do the same thing they've been doing. But when people get the Holy Ghost here, you know what happens? Their life is changed. They live holy now. That's what we got to do. We got to live holy. Nobody has, if you go to a church or listen to a preacher that does this, if you want to be saved, pray this prayer with me. Now, if you hear this, it's a lie. And I say, if you want to be saved, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And everybody say, come on, let's do it. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Be ruler of my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Come in and fill me with your spirit. And my brothers and sisters, if you have just prayed that prayer, you're now saved. Dream big. And then y'all walk out of here and you think you saved by praying the sinner's prayer. And it ain't even the sinner's prayer. You know who prayer was? It was my prayer. It was the pastor's prayer, but you, the sinner, repeated it. The sinner's prayer is any prayer that a sinner prayed. That's right. Y'all with me? So Joel Osteen deceiving a lot of folks out there. Oh, did I call his name? Yeah, I did. Joel Osteen do that every single morning. Every Sunday morning. He comes on at 9 a.m. He goes up at 9.30. At 9.27, you'll see him up there doing that sinner's prayer. On point. 9.26, 9.27. He'll be doing that sinner's prayer. And he says, and, he says and, 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 we, and we believe that if you have just prayed that prayer, you're now saved. Right? And that's the problem. He believes it. But the Bible don't back it up. His words are, and we believe. That, that ain't, it ain't about what you believe. It's about what the Bible says. Right. Amen? Amen? That's what deceives a lot of people. Yeah. All these preachers want to preach what they believe. It ain't about what you believe. It's about what the scriptures say. Amen. Because you you trying to teach people what you believe, but you ain't got no Bible to back that junk up. If you can show me one place in the Bible where anybody got saved by praying a sinner's prayer. I'll shut this church down. We'll turn it to a club and start tomorrow. Hmm? And you know, people around here would love a club. <laughs> Amen? With hang chandeliers and everything. <laughs> Disco balls, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Amen? Nobody in the Bible ever got saved by doing that. And if you find it, I shut my church down and give everything in our account, bank account, everything. You ain't going to find it. Amen. It's a lie, but it makes people feel good. The person who has an issue with sin, say a sinner's prayer and they walk out and they still have that same issue with sin. Amen. But when God comes in, he said, you're a new creature. What does that mean? You are a new person. You are a new being. Your mindset is new. Come on and talk to me. Amen. Hallelujah. And when your mindset is new, your heart is new. Your heart has a different affection. Instead of your heart being set on pornos and fornication and lying and stealing. Hallelujah. Your heart is set on pleasing the Almighty. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, when God comes in, hallelujah, he makes a transformation of the mind and heart. Hallelujah. When your mind and heart has been transformed, your body does something different because your spirit leads the way. Amen. 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 But when, when, we, when we don't have the Holy Spirit, our flesh leads the way. That's right. People love to walk in. Listen, walking in the flesh is fun. 
I'm telling you, walking in the flesh is a, walking in sin is fun. That's why it's hard for us to get away from it. Am I right about it? And y'all might hear preachers say, God save me from a miserable life of sin. Y'all hear people say that? They lying. Sin wasn't miserable. I had a ball of sin. Sometimes my flesh wants to go back to sin. Why? Because I had such a good time in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Had a good time in sin. But I'm glad I found out. Huh? My heart, hallelujah, has a different affection. Hallelujah. My heart is set in a different manner. Hallelujah. My mind is fixed to walk with the almighty God. Hallelujah. My heart is set. Hallelujah. On looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what keeps me going. I know that there's a place that's prepared for me. Hallelujah. I know that Jesus is coming back one day. Hallelujah. For a church without spot and without wrinkle. Hallelujah. So I got to make sure my spirit is clean. I got to make sure everything is ironed out. Because God don't want to see no wrinkles. Hallelujah. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. And he wants us to be sanctified and holy. Amen. Your heart got to be fixed. Turn to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Let's see here. Colossians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Colossians hiding from me. Where you at, Colossians? Let's see here. Right after Thess right before Thessalonians. If you find the book of Thessalonians, you're too far. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Right after Philippians and Galatians. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 1. <clears throat> Colossians 3 and verse number 1. Amen. I want to encourage you to change your mind. Amen. But you got to have a heart to want to serve God. Got to have it. Amen. You got to have a heart to want to serve Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you don't have a heart to walk this way, you won't last long. Amen. You won't last long. Colossians chapter number 3. I still see pages flipping. Page 920. You got page 920. If you got one of our church Bibles in the back. 920. I'm so good to see all y'all faces. Huh? Three and one. Chapter three, verse one. Page 919. If you have one of our local Bibles there. If y'all like those Bibles too, you know where I bought them from? Family Dollar. <laughs> yeah, I bought them Family Dollar. Yeah. It takes so long to replenish them. I guess people don't come here for Bibles that often. I picked up five of them. I went in there three weeks later, they didn't have no more. Went in there three weeks after that, they didn't have no more. I'm like, you still ain't replenished them from the last month when I picked them up. What's going on? <laughs> then I went to another one to see if they had. They didn't have none. My goodness. <laughs> if it was an AA book, they would have replenished it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is all the AA you need right here. That's right. <laughs> That's true. NA, Narcotic Anonymous, AA, Alcohol Anonymous. <laughs> um, amen. Yeah, this is all you need. All you need is Jesus. Amen. And the, and the right person to teach you. See, a lot of people still struggling with that stuff because they ain't been delivered. See, AA, those support groups, NA, whatever you want to call it, these support groups, they help some people. But for a period of time, amen, they may help you having that support group may be good for you for a period of time. But guess what? You still need deliverance. Right. It may have helped you for this time frame, for these three years that you've been free, right? But you still can't go to heaven by just being free from that. You got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Even if AA help you, you got to have the Holy Spirit to get into heaven. Amen. So the ultimate thing we need is the deliverance from it. Amen. And if people get the Holy Spirit, every support group will shut down. Because won't nobody be in them. Why? Because they got all the support they need. The power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Glory! Come on and talk to me. Amen. Colossians 3 and 1. We've got to close here in a second. If ye then be risen, be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Okay? Now watch this. 
Watch this again. Look at verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. See, when we come to God, when we get baptized in Jesus' name, don't you know that baptism is symbolic of you being buried with Christ and being risen with him? That's what the baptism is for. Yes, ultimately, the baptism in the name of Jesus, it washes away every sin that you've ever committed. You could have done anything this morning and get baptized in Jesus' name this hour, God will forgive you for everything that you've done in the past. You got a new start. If you've been in sin for 45 years, 40 years, right? Doing the same different stuff, doing the different stuff, right? For 40 years in sin, you get baptized in Jesus' name today, God will wash away all the 40 years of sin you've had. He'll do it. That's what the baptism is for. You're being washed in his blood Amen. for the forgiveness of sins. So the baptism is symbolic for you going down in the water. You know, Jesus went in the grave. You're going into a grave, but it's a liquid grave. It's a water grave, right? And that's why we bury you in the water. I've had to dump people twice because when I, when I dumped them in the water, they, 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 they forehead didn't go under because they fight me, right? So I said, I got to dump you again. Your whole body got to be buried. Right? It's symbolic of you being buried. With when you go to a cemetery, you don't see a forehead sticking out of the ground, do you? Uh, that freak y'all out on it. <laughs> you go to the cemetery and see a hand sticking up out the ground. No. If the hand's sticking out of the ground, the body ain't buried. Right? So you get buried under the water. Right? Like you get buried in the grave. You get buried under the water, but it's a liquid grave. That's you being buried with Christ. Then, just like Jesus rose on the third day, I'm going to leave you down there for three days. I was just playing. I was just joking. I'm going to dunk you, and you're going to, just like Jesus rose from the grave, you rise up out of the grave. Amen? I ain't dare left nobody underwater for three days. Don't get scared. I was trying to make a joke, but maybe it was a poor joke. Dunk you underwater, bring you back up. That's the symbolic of you being buried with Christ and you're rising from the grave with Christ. Amen? Now watch this. Look at verse 1. If ye then been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. You've been baptized in Jesus' name. You now call yourself being a part of the church now, right? Trying to be a part of the church. You've been risen with Christ because you've been baptized and you've risen with him. And he says, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. You've got to seek those things above. Look at verse 2. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your affection, that means your mind, amen, on things above, not on things on earth. Read an insert here. Nor are they to dwell on the things that are not wrong in themselves, houses, jobs, careers, ambitions, but can be wrong should they become priorities above Christ, okay? So, you thinking about a job, your career, your house, your ambitions, those things may not be sin, right? There's no sin for you to be in a career. Like, I'm in banking, right? Just got a promotion too. Hey, praise the Lord, <laughs> right? That's my career. Me working at a credit union is not a sin. But if I put working at the credit union above God... Now it becomes an issue. Amen. Your ambitions. We'll talk about that soon. The, your ambitions, right? You, you may have things that you may love to do. Your, uh, what else we got here? Your house, your cars, right? Nothing's wrong with you having a house or having a car, right? Live prosperous. Live a prosperous life. If you can afford it, buy it. Nothing wrong with that. But as soon as you put that car... Above God, now you got an issue. Let me, let me give you an example. You've been going to church all, uh, let's, let's just do a time frame. For three years, you set your heart, your affections on God, and for three years, you've been going to church every Sunday. Well, God gave you a promotion on your job. He said, you know what? I want me a new car. Cadillac. Now you go get you that Cadillac. Red Cadillac with red rims and red leather seats. <laughs> with a beige trim. <laughs> Uh -huh. Tinted windows, sunroof, the whole nine, right? Navigation, everything, right? 
Now, you've been going to church for three years. Some of y'all smiling. Some of y'all want that Cadillac. I can tell by your face, boy. Y'all want that. I, want, I, I wouldn't mind one either. Y'all said, they got y'all smiling better when I was talking about Jesus. I was just play it. <laughs> Listen, for three years you've been going to church every Sunday. Ain't missed a beat. But ain't even bought that Cadillac. And now the church right beside the car wash. <laughs> There's a car wash right here. And instead of you coming to church, you say, I got to clean my rim and keep them looking nice. I got to wipe my seats down and keep them looking nice. You skipped out on church to take care of your car. You just put that car above God. Why? Wow, you broke your routine. You had your affections set on God until the car came. Now your affections set on the car. Again, nothing wrong with having a car, right? Just an example. Amen. Nothing wrong with having the car. Nothing wrong with having the house. Nothing wrong with having the job or the career. But don't put those things above God. Once he crashes it, I'm going to be like, you would switch it up once he crashes it. Hey, he got a point. You know? You put it up, you put it above God, God might snatch it from you. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Hey, testing, testing. Amen. You put it above God. Testing. Oh, yeah, testing. Yeah, yeah. You put it above God, God might snatch it from you, right? Yeah. See, and, and I think he goes into this too about um no, it's, I was twisting the thing. I think I twisted it too tight. No, it's not dead. It's not dead. It's good. Thank you though for your uh ambitions. <laughs> Amen. Um then there's a scripture that says that uh, think on things above because things on earth, moth and rust, can corrupt it. Right? So you got that car. If you don't take if you if you, if you don't take care of it, then rust will corrupt it. Right? That car ain't gonna last always. The miles get a high on it, it might start having issues, right? Now the car gets 10 years old and you're like, is it really worth putting? Uh, a new transmission in this thing or should I just buy another one, right? As time go on, those things fade away. But I'm glad Jesus don't. Hallelujah. He's always there. Hallelujah. He don't fade away. Hallelujah. This earth shall pass away. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass. But my word, hallelujah, is stand forever. Amen. So put your affections on it. So he says, set your affections on things above not on things on earth. Amen. Again, one, one more thing. The things on earth may not be sin, but they can become sin if you put them above God. Now that's idol worship. Because you have now, idol worship is anything you put equal or above God. That's what idol worship is. Anything you put equal or above God is idol worship. Amen. This says verse 3, Colossians 3 and 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. He's coming back for us. Amen? And we want to appear with him in glory. Amen? In conclusion, Jesus shed his blood so that we can be forgiven of our sins. No matter what you have done in life, God wants to forgive you of it. Because it's not, it's not his will that you should die and go to hell. Amen. Hell was not made for you. Yes, yes. Look at a person next to you and say, brother or sister, brother or sister. hell was not made hell for you. Made for hell was made for the devil and the false prophet. Yes. The devil and his angels. That's what the Bible says. It said hell was made for the devil and angels. And it said hell was made for the devil and the false prophet. Yes. It wasn't made for you. Don't go to a place where it wasn't prepared for you. But Jesus said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He went to prepare a place for us so we can go back with him when he comes. Set your affections on things above, not on things on earth. God bless your Facebook. God bless your YouTube. In Jesus' name.